Greetings, brethren of the one God throughout this world, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. So today is the 25th of December, 2023. I want to pick up the end of the scripture I read yesterday about Paul's thorn. And of course, the messenger from Satan can get into the flesh of any person. And uh, there's a big subject there, just looking at the word flesh. Physical body, spiritual body, sinful nature, all of this. Uh, and uh, the devil knows the weaknesses of man. And remember that Jesus too had a messenger from Satan, Satan himself. The devil came into the, the desert to tempt Jesus, even using scripture to try to get Jesus to do his will, the devil's will. And that's been going on ever since. If the devil can get us, Christ's people, to do the will of the devil, there's a very great sense of the devil mocking God. Of course, God lets it all play out, as he did for his only begotten son in, in the desert. God allowed Satan to come to his only begotten son when Jesus was hungry, the point of weakness. And like I said, quoting scripture. So man can wittingly or unwittingly use the Bible to control people. That's an overview over the centuries <clears throat> where man has controlled people, masses of people, <clears throat> excuse me, to use the uh, Catholic term, the masses. We've touched on this before, a theatrical, religious group of actors originally acting out in Latin, a play, if you like, a religious play, and ordinary people uneducated people who didn't uh, didn't uh, study Latin were not educated they just listened to the priests performing ceremonies incantations prayers whatever in Latin in a Latin tongue but no interpretation and ordinary people then were not allowed to have the physical Bible written down in black and white in their language for themselves to test and weigh. So again, this is the preamble, an overview of where the church has been, how it became denominational, how man uh, took the idea of Christianity, a form of ideas, a, a form of teaching, to form a religion called Christianity, like every other religion, based on someone's teaching. Buddha, Buddhism. Christ, Christism, if you like. But we're talking about the modern, main, what was called <clears throat> the mainstream, biblical, evangelical, Born again Christian church of various denominations. And when I was born of God, there were some very straightforward denominations. You knew where you stood with them, and it was quickly understood which denominations were evangelical, which were cultic, which were cults like the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons and that was uh, 30 nearly 40 years ago so let's just look at that passage again this is Paul the former Pharisee the former Pharisee above all Pharisees a stickler for the law of Pharisaism Judaism here was Paul, the murderer, the persecutor, the top one who was anti-Christ, 
Antichrist followers, and that term Christian was coined in a pejorative way, a negative way, to put down the true disciples of Christ as being mere clones of Jesus. You're just clones, you're just puppets, you're robots in modern language. But of course we know that we are not puppets. But the, the world, in contrast, they are puppets because it is the devil, the god of this age, who's working the strings over their life. But when you're born again, Jesus Christ cuts you free from all the strings to the puppeteer of this fallen world, the devil and his demons and the satanic agent provocateurs. A term I use for the Pharisees, goat herds, and their flock of, of uh, so-called sheep are actually goats. And Pharisees were actually goat herds. Now Saul the Pharisee, as you know, Jesus, sovereign Lord, appeared to him on the road to Damascus, appeared to Saul the Pharisee, the murderer, the persecutor. Jesus appeared to Saul, blinding light from the heavens and a voice, a voice speaking directly, audibly to Saul the Pharisee. Why are you persecuting me? Well, some would say hearing voices is a sign of madness. Some would say every genius is bordering on madness. And Paul certainly was a, a hyper-intelligent man, a Pharisee beyond all Pharisees. He knew the inside out of Judaism. And presumably he would run rings around people of his own uh, contemporary time, his own colleagues, so to speak, in the Pharisee organization of the religion of Israel. So Jesus got Saul's attention, a blinding light, an epiphany moment, a realization when Saul heard the voice of God, Jesus, speaking to him directly. And the other day we talked about Samuel, and God got Samuel's attention in the middle of the night, Samuel, and he thought it was Eli the priest. But Eli wasn't hearing God directly. Eli's life and the life of his sons were, was out of control. And so God got Samuel's attention as a boy, and eventually Eli understood this is not, this is God talking to you. Samuel, ask God what he wants. And of course, if you look at that prophecy, it was a prophecy about Eli and his sons. Not good. But if, if you can't hear Jesus' voice directly, but you are a sheep, but you want to hear Jesus' voice directly, then that's your prayer. Jesus, I want to hear you clearly and clearer and clearer each day. And if you can't hear Jesus directly for all sorts of reasons, then you submit to your brethren in Christ, your brothers and sisters in Christ, your friends in Christ. And I keep emphasizing for years now the, the term in Christ, because my friends are in Christ. My brothers are in Christ. My sisters are in Christ. They're not in this world anymore in but not of this world in christ not of this world no more than jesus who was physically in this world he was in the world but not of this world he was in the will of god the father and that's where we come to in our journey heavenwards that we realize that we must do the will of god the father i mean surely every christian knows that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Father. In Christ, in the Holy Spirit. So let's just look at this. This is, uh, again, we're talking about the thorn. The thorn in, in, in Paul's flesh, Saul who became Paul, 
he had to put up with it. My grace is sufficient for you. Put up with it. To know your enemy. And to know what God's voice is, we know what the enemy's voice is. And there's an absolute contrast. Even, even though the enemy might try to mimic, copy God's voice. And the enemy might present himself to you indirectly through a person or directly in your mind a thought comes to you and you think it might be Jesus, God speaking to you. But you take captive the thought, you hold on to that thought, you test it, you weigh it, and if you're not sure, you share it with a good, trusted brother or sister in Christ, friend in Christ, you test it, you weigh it. And you look at scripture. So, this is why we're in fellowship with one another. This is why God has told us, don't stop fellowshipping one with another. And it's not just on a Sunday, not just on a Sabbath, every day, every day. In your homes, your households of faith, biblical marriages, you test and weigh what God is saying between you two in your biblical marriage, according to Scripture, according to the Holy Spirit. So again, this is still preamble, because I want to read the Scripture. So let's do that. 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 1. <clears throat> Paul writing, This will be my third visit to you, Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Now, I, in my mind, I linked that with Matthew 18, verses 15 through to 17, settling disputes of sin from one brother to another brother, one sister to another sister, a brother to a sister, etc., etc. How, how do you deal with it? Eventually, you get to a testimony uh, of discussing the sin one to one, two to one, or two to two, and then it's tell the body. And it doesn't have to be the church meeting on a Sunday, obviously, because there are people go there and they may not be born of God, they may not be very mature, and all of this dealing with sin one to another. It's a bit over their heads because some of them are babies drinking milk. And this is strong meat. Of a brother who sins against a brother, that one brother must go to the other one and get it resolved. Get it resolved. There's no good you saying, as a church-going Christian, even a minister, that you love God who you haven't seen but you don't love your brother or sister who you have seen. And of course, I'm talking about the perfect love of God in us. Human love, we are being perfected. Being perfected. We'll get to that in a minute. So, every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Verse 2, I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time. I now repeat it while absent. On my return, I will not spare those who sinned earlier or any of the others, since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me. He is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For to be sure... He, Christ, was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power we live with him to serve you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Hence the term... In Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in God's will. You're either in Christ or you're not in Christ. You can't be both. 
Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you, unless, of course, you failed the test? And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Anything. We pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, brackets, not wrong, that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. And of course, we're talking about Jesus is the truth. The truth is the truth. God's love is God's love. God's Holy Spirit is God's Holy Spirit. It's a, it's a statement of fact. The truth is Jesus Christ. Speaking the truth in love. Speaking in Christ, in God, the, the God of love. Speaking the truth in kindness. Speaking the truth in Christ. Speaking the kindness which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad when, whenever we are weak, and, but you are strong. And our prayer is for your perfection. Now that is the key word that's on my mind today. A conversation I had on the phone with a brother. We're learning as we are going along, as we're growing along in Christ with one another. We are the church of two, three, four, in conversation with each other in Christ, learning more about the truth, about Jesus, the truth. So the word perfection. And if you ask people in your circle of friends in Christ, uh, brothers, brethren in Christ, even just associates in, in Christ, people you know vaguely, and they call themselves Christian, you ask them, do you want to be perfect? And what comes out of their mouth next is what's in their heart. That's a scripture. I've just seen someone, just bear with me. <laughs> He's giving me a wave. He's going down, he's probably going to go to the shop or something. Anyway, um, yeah, so perfection. God is perfecting us. Who's the us? The body of Christ. The, the, the Holy Spirit in us, he is transforming us. He is changing us. He is making us new. We are a new creation today. New wineskin today for new wine. God is giving us new wine every day. New wine of God's mercy, if you like. New every morning. God's love, mercy, grace, compassion. God's spirit in us. Perfecting us. God's will is that we choose Christ to be born again. We choose to receive the Holy Spirit in, in that term called baptism with fire, a fullness of the Holy Spirit, the fire of God in your bones, within your physical body, within your soul, is your spirit, your human spirit. And that's where God dwells richly, the Holy Spirit in your temple, the human spirit. So the perfection, the perfecting is ongoing. But it's down to you. It's down to you to ask God with your free will, Jesus, change me. Jesus, set me free. Jesus, release me from my prison. Release me from my captivity. Now, these are simple truths 
uh, that are out there for decades. It's always been the truth. Chains of addiction. Uh, strings, if you like, where the enemy uh, is like a puppet, a puppeteer, uh, that he is moving you to do the things he wants you to do. And of course, the devil's not interested in your freedom. The devil absolutely wants to make you his puppet, his robot. And this is why I can see it clearly and clearer and clearer. The spirit of this world is on all the religious organizations who see themselves, like the Jehovah Witnesses do, as the kingdom halls. But there's nothing good about the bricks and mortar. No matter how glorious a cathedral is, no matter how saint, uh, centuries old the church building is, God is building up the people. The living stones are people, not the physical. And it's very hard for people who have been brought up in a religious sense for generations. They're a Christian by birth, so to speak. They're born in a, quote, Christian country. They go to a Christian church building. They're part of a Christian church denomination. They become a Christian according to the rules and regulations of that denomination. Christening, baptism, confirmation, prayers, communion, ordination, Bible colleges, all of this uh, is part of Christianity as much as other religions have a, the same type of system. The Jews have their way of teaching Jewish children. The Muslims will have the same. Buddhists will have the same. But it doesn't make anybody of Christ until you're born of Christ. John 3, verses 3 to 17, plus 21, you must be born again. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven until you're born again. That your sins must be dealt with by the blood of the Lamb, by your full, genuine, and permanent repentance. And God knows your heart. He knows if you want to go forward and change, and he knows if you don't. He knows if you're lukewarm to him. He knows if you're paying lip service. He knows that your yes and amen is meaningless if you don't mean it. So we'll, we'll close it here. We're talking about perfection. God is perfect. God is holy. And that perfectly holy God says to us, be perfect, be holy. And it's yes, Lord, amen. Help me. Holy Spirit, teach me. Instruct me. Change me, Lord God. Set me free. Release me from the prison. Bind up my broken heart. Provide healing. If I'm, if I'm mourning and, and uh, physically or technically dressed in black, I'm looking back to the grave of my parents, even the parents' parents, I'm not looking forward. And that's disobedience. Luke 9.62 Put your hand to the plough, plough on, forwards, don't look back. The thorn in the flesh, the messenger from Satan. The devil's in our past, he's not in our future. Sin will come crouching at the door, knocking at the door, giving you opportunities to sin, even just to look and sin. And, and sin of the mind is temptation. The, the enemy speaks, a messenger from Satan can give you a thought. Indirectly, through a person, Peter said to Jesus, you shan't go to Jerusalem. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. The words that Peter spoke out of his mouth, for all the reasons Peter had, trying to protect his Lord and Saviour, the teacher. He didn't want Jesus to die in Jerusalem. 
And Jesus knew that was the enemy tempting him to not go to Jerusalem and maybe live another, another Passover, have another year on earth. Jesus knew the voice of his Father. So we must, too, know the voice of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah. We must submit to God's voice and obey God, which is his will for us in Christ Jesus. So I'm still trying to close this, this message. So Father, I thank you, we thank you, Lord God, that we are by your grace and your mercy new every morning to receive the new wine. And today we celebrate that you were born, Jesus, not necessarily on this day. It doesn't matter which day you were born. The fact is, you were born. You lived. You taught. You, you were crucified. You shed your blood in obedience to Father's will so that my sin could be paid for. And those out there, Lord, who likewise, li likewise believe that, they are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. We're very grateful, Father. Ask you, Lord, to lead us, Heavenly Father. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and Lord, we're grateful for every day you give us, every new day of salvation. By your will, Father. Bless our brothers and sisters out there, those who are in Christ, friends in Christ, although we don't know them personally, most of them physically, we know by the Holy Spirit the remnant few obedient disciples, ambassadors of Christ Father, that they are, we are your children, purchased by the blood of Christ, and we're grateful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for changing us, transforming us, and conforming us into the likeness of Christ from one degree of glory to another. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Keep in touch. In theory, I'm with Trevor tomorrow. I'm assuming we, we just get back to normal. God bless you. And pray. Let's keep praying for each other. God bless.